cause of LGBT rights. Together, we will explore some of the complexities that face these candidates as they chart a path forward towards a more inclusive and equitable future for all. Through our discussion, I encourage each of you to engage thoughtfully, listen attentively, and challenge any assumptions you may have as we seek to broaden our understanding and deepen our commitment to the principles of equality and justice for all, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Together, let us strive to build a world where every person is free to live authentically, without fear, discrimination, or persecution. A world where love is celebrated, diversity is embraced, and every individual is afforded the dignity and the respect they deserve. Thank you for joining us today as we move forward towards a more just and inclusive society. Let's begin. My name is Hannah Botkin Jody. My pronouns are she, her. Yeah, I live in the um, River Park, Ohio, with my wife, Kristen, and our adopted son, Lance. Send help. He's 14. Uh, and um, I have been working in the LGBT community space for more than a decade, um, focusing specifically on serving the LGBT community. And I am honored today to be sitting with you both as you take the next step um, to advocating for people in a way that I can't from the courtroom. So I will start with you, Ari. Can I call you Ari? Yes, everybody does. Oh, wow. <laughs> Would you please introduce yourself and talk a little bit yes. about your race? Yeah. So my name is Ariane Childry, Ari just for short. Um, I am running not only in one of the most red districts in the state, I am running in literally the most red district in the state. Uh, I am the challenger to the um, person that introduced the drag ban in the state of Ohio. Um, and that was a big motivator to get involved. I'm the reluctant politician. I liked being the activist. I was not interested in going the political route, but no one was stepping up. And our whole thing was if you're going to target our community, then you're going to run against us as well. So. grassroots campaign we are um, you know while I might be you know a trans candidate the focus has been on economics on expansion of broadband um, on utility costs in our region and trying to show the broader community that is LGBT candidates yes we can be an advocate for LGBT rights but we're able to walk and chew gum at the same time we're able to focus on those things as well as our economy and actually make a better district the number of your district and where it is yeah. in the state? Um, 84th State House District. I have um, all of Mercer County, Northern Dark, and Southern All Glades. That is Perfect. right up against the Indiana border. It's so close to the Indiana border, I swear I think Mike Pence is governing. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you, Mary Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> Can you address the intersectionality of the fact that the LGBT community has so much in common with the people that are voting? for MAGA, voting for red, where we don't have access to some of these basic rights, but they are voting so colorblind, pun intended, um, that they don't see it. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with misunderstandings. I've been amazed, and both my campaign manager, who's actively recording me, um, that has, uh, we've engaged with people, and we found that a lot of the resistance comes from uh, misinformation more than anything. You know, in our own community, we have wonderful people that tend to lean more Republican. Um, but a lot of the things that they have problems with when it comes to LGBT rights are things that are non-existent in the first place. You know, we've had the conversations about, um, well, you know, I'm opposed to kids getting sex change operations, as they w as they want to put it. And, and I'm like, congratulations. So is pretty much everyone on the planet, because it doesn't happen. Um, but, you know, we've tried to discuss with them on that, and we've actually done a dispelling myths um, event in our community, where as a trans person, we allow people to come and ask their questions specifically on things like HB 68. Um, so we're trying to get past that and help people see the reality of what's really going on. And also to help them understand that this is not a threat to you. 
This is about putting people on an equal playing field with you. So I've openly um, talked, you know, I have with very conservative religious groups in the area, and I've made it very clear to them that when we're talking about equality, it doesn't come against their church. No one is saying your church has to perform a gay marriage if you don't want to. As a matter of fact, you would, I told them, I said, you would have the weirdest ally. I said, because the crazy progressive trans woman would be standing outside there with you if anyone tried to force you to do it. Because you have every right. We just don't believe that elected officials and government have that right. Yeah. Um, so, I to dispel those myths and then help them see that there are issues that we can work on, like income inequality that's impacting them just as much as it is us in a lot of times in these rural communities. It's hard to think all the same gas. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. I don't. I don't fill up with trans gas. I got the same price. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it's in a cheaper rate, I'm willing to start. Well, <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. 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 Ye
with what my identity is, and ultimately that's between them. But how comfortable are they with the amount of money coming out of their wallet each time they pay that utility bill? You know, right. How comfortable are they with the $450 million that the voucher scam has pulled out of their local yes. school yeah, yeah, yeah. as they pay for a new school levy again? Preach, because preach. they're running their <laughs> Helping them understand that you don't have to like everything about me. I frankly, pardon me for being blunt, don't give a damn if you do or not. <laughs> but you can like me or not like me, but am I going to serve you? Am I going to make your life better? And is the hate of my opponent doing anything to better your life? Because I don't see it. <laughs> Um, I want to kind of change gears and talk about um, the youth. So a lot of people um, believe that LGBT rights and trans rights is a new issue, and it's just happening now, and oh my goodness. Uh, it's the internet, it's the Facebooks, it's them TikToks, and uh, they're doing damage to our youth. Um, I have um, a, a statistic where they say now at one in four, of people under the age of 18 identify with some measure of non-heterosexuality. And so this is a really growing generation. What can we as advocates and allies do to support the youth in not only getting um, the mentorship they need, but also access to their voices as they're coming up in our general election? Are you making that? We, uh, one of the things we did, um, so a bordering district had um, um, a 23-year-old uh, um, gay man running for the Democratic Party. Signatures weren't, unfortunately, didn't meet the signature barrier. You know, we happily absorbed him into our campaign, had him speaking. He's outside of our district, um, but, you know, we're kind of helping people understand that, you know, my opponent, Angie King, doesn't just write bills for my district. Write some for your district, too, so you need to be interested. Um, so bringing them in, I think the other thing is actually having something actionable. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of, we do a lot of meetings, and those are absolutely necessary for the function of any committee, any organization. But let's be honest. I know some of us have difficulty staying awake during some of our committee meetings. Y'all you know, are doing you guys slap yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got to make sure that we're also getting things for um, the younger people that are getting involved that feel like they're actually making a difference. And they are. And part of that means that um, I'm a firm believer that pride can't just be about us showing up to a parade every year. Okay? I'm highly Kind of bring back in the protest element of it. Yeah. Um, so we do protest. We protest. I protested my opponent uh, with her drag band before I was ever her opponent. Um, and you know, we're encouraging people to get involved in ways like that, to show up at the state house when there's something going on there. So give people actionable things. Committees are great. Get them on committees but then get feet on the ground. Yeah. Well, thank you once again to you and to our attendees for your attention. Your unwavering commitment to the LGBT cause is pushing us forward in a direction towards truly liberty and justice for all. Let's give one more hand of applause.